Bitcoin. Let's talk about Bitcoin citadels, Nick. Uh, this is something you see on Bitcoin Twitter all the time. You got the Bitcoiners saying, you know, we're building our set, our, our citadels. Uh, you know, essentially, uh, you know, like an Ayn Rand novel, right? It's, uh, you know, who is John Galt? Uh, you know, this idea that, you know, we're just going to secede. We're going to start our own communities away from the Keynesian madhouse. Do you think this is going to work? I mean, I, actually, there have been a couple of attempts in the Bitcoin community to do this over the past 10 years. So far, they haven't worked, but right, will this work? Do we move to a city-state model in the future? What, what, where do you see this going, Nick? Yes, and I think this plays into a broader trend, which is uh, the death of the nation state, you know, where this, this system, uh, you know, that started, I think, about 400 something years ago with the Treaty of Westphalia that created the modern nation state. I think that is a trend that is happening. This is disintegrating. What is going to come next? And I think something uh, that could come next is something that was in uh, the uh, old science fiction book, uh, The Diamond Age, which is something called files. In other words, you're going to be find people grouped together who have like who are like minded and uh, have the same interests and are passionate about the same thing. And I think we're seeing this already start to happen with Bitcoiners. Um, and that is where the citadels are going to play in. So, yes, I think we are moving. I think this is a long term trend. This is a big trend. This is not going to happen tomorrow but i think we're seeing the nation state lose its uh lose its power uh over people i mean frankly people who live in you know, look at the u.s for example just because you have a blue passport doesn't mean you share the same values or interests as somebody else who has a blue passport so i think you're gonna people are gonna naturally migrate to the people who have the same values as they do and bitcoiners by and large share a lot of the same values in terms of uh, just the basic stuff, how they view, how their ethics are, how they view uh, work and, and so forth. So I think Bitcoin, you're already seeing Bitcoiners come together and talk about this. So I think it plays into this broader trend and I think it is a very real possibility. It's interesting because, um, you know, you've seen in the lead up to the end of this year, you've seen that, that desire amongst the American population. Polls show that, you know, they basically want to split off into red and blue areas. But within this like whole nation state thing, you have globalization where capital is just free to go wherever they want, wherever it, it, it best is uh, treated. Whereas humans have been more and more and more restricted in terms of where they're allowed to go, which is the exact opposite of most of human history. The first several tens of thousands of years, we just traveled wherever we wanted and maybe capital was more restricted. But um, on top of this, you also have the civilizational model, right? So you have civilizations like the Chinese civilization rather than a nation state really in the sort of uh, Western sort of system. So like how how do you how do we get to that point i see the individuals i see the bitcoiners wanting to set up the citadels and a, a city state model and certainly i could see uh the people of new york city or manhattan to be totally happy they would be love to have their own city state but like how does power relinquish, right? They never give up power uh, willingly. How does the military industrial complex of these various nation states around the world, how, do, how does that dissolve or disintegrate? Yeah, it's, it's going to be bankruptcy. That That's what's going to do it. Or losing a war. Um, I go back to Argentina because I think Argentina is such a terrific example for this stuff. So how does, the, you know, the Argentine central government, yeah, it, it controls the airport, but it really doesn't have much writ outside of Buenos Aires. Uh, but what, what happened? Well, they, they lost the Falcon Islands War. That gutted the Argentine military from which it would never recover. And it's had several hyperinflations and bankruptcies since then. That's what's going to do the trick. The same thing happened to the Romans and all other empires. Happened, it's happening to the U.S. too. And you got to remember, these are big, these are huge long-term trends. And we're just taking a snapshot in time. The important thing is to get the big picture right, because most people don't get the big picture right. And they fo they're they focused on their day-to-day -day stuff. You want to get the big picture right. You, want, you don't want to be left behind and, uh, you know, when these historic trends play out. So I think that's what's going to happen. It's Yes, you're absolutely right. They're, the nation nation state is power is going to have to be broken and it's going to be broken i think through bankruptcy and losing wars which is clearly happening the question about cycles because i know you study the big picture as you talk about it you've got the fourth turning which is uh, the generational 
cycles, uh, as we've talked about a few times. Then you have the Thucydides trap, which is uh, kind of one power uh, giving way to another power, in this case, the U.S. giving way to China. Uh, so you've, you've got, uh, and China, of course, is emerging, and on a purchasing power parity basis, it is already is the world's largest economy. Uh, in, in what's left of the legacy system, in, in what's left of the nation states before they dissolve as we know them, how, what do you think the final end game is going to be on the nation state level? Well, you know, the people who run the nation states, it's interesting because they aspire to build, uh, you know, we're talking about you know, more of a global government. They, they aspire to have uh, uh, this this system of NATO, of the IMF, the World Bank. This is what the elites of the West clearly wanted, but it's not how it worked out. So instead of moving towards that, um, we're going to go the other direction, and, and we're going to see the West uh, get knocked down a peg, more than a peg. I mean, you know, this is huge with China's rise and the collapse of, you know, we're talking about the collapse of the U.S. The EU is obviously on its way out. What is, the, you know, look at the big picture. That is Western civilization getting knocked down and the East rising. This is something that really hasn't happened since the collapse of the Roman Empire. This is huge, huge, huge stuff. But nonetheless, if you look at where the current trends are going, that's what's happening. That's If you take it to the logical conclusion, that is what's happening, unless something changes that. You're right. We have the Thucydides trap. Um, the U.S. With, with the dynamic with the rising power and and and, and the dominant power, established power, that is going to be a huge trend that plays out. Um, I hope it doesn't turn into war. Uh, it very well could, though.